Things are getting really crazy. For a while now, you've been able to generate images using AI tools like Midjourney. Well, now you can take those images, upload them to a website, which will then generate a 3D object that you can download. And in this case, I went off and 3D printed it, and surprisingly, it looks really good. And the new service that I'm referring to is 3D Maker AI, which will allow you to take images of either drawings or these AI generated images or just photos that you found online and upload them to the site and using AI tools, it will again generate 3D objects that you can then download and use for a variety of purposes. Maybe you're making games and you needed an asset created, or in my case, I'm looking to have things 3D printed so I can now take those objects, modify them if I'd like to, and run off and 3D print them. And I have some basic 3D modeling skills, but I'm not the best, nor do I have a ton of time to spend learning a lot of the 3D modeling software that's out there. So having something like this that potentially is able to generate an object for me that I'm wanting to run off in 3D print is a really cool concept. So I wanted to test that out with you here today and see what kind of results I'm getting from this new AI service and if it's worth your while. Now, the one big question that I'm sure you're asking yourself right now, which is the same thing I was asking as soon as I found out about the service is how much does it actually cost to generate one of these 3D objects? And again, it's not the 3D print but it's the actual 3D printable file that you have full rights and access to using however you'd like. And there are two different options for paying for this service. There's no free option, well, at least at the time of making this video, that you can use. The first one is the standard pricing option, which will cost you $25. This is for more of your simplistic designs or objects. And then you have a $40 option for your more high detailed objects that you're looking to have created. And I know the pricing can feel a little intimidating. That's why I'm making this video here so that I can test out and show you the results that I'm gonna get using the standard option and that high option. I also found a guideline on the site that helps detail out some of the requirements when it comes to uploading some of the objects. So you can't have multiple subjects in one image. It can't be just a photo of a person. It sounds like that's not going to work. It needs to be some like either a character or an object of some sort that it can actually generate from. Also, if you have a character of some sort, it sounds like you can't have lots of little intricate weapons or shields and other sorts of accessories that might go with that. It's going to be too complex complex for it to actually generate. And another important one is a really simplified background. So nothing really crazy in the background, if at all possible. And before I can just start uploading images, I need some assets that I can work with. So I went over into Midjourney to create some assets to work with. So I entered in some basic prompt information and kept working at this until I got something that I was relatively happy with, with some semblance of a dripping skull. I then took that image and uploaded it to the site using the standard option, which is that $25 option option there. And after about 10 to 20 minutes, I got a notification that my file was ready to download. Now, the results weren't the best that I was hoping for. But in hindsight, I think that just has to do with me and the image that I chose to upload. It wasn't the best quality. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for either. I think I was just so excited to jump in here and try this that I just went with something. So I went off and wanted to see what kind of results I would get using the high function. That's that $40 option. So I figured, hey, you know what? I love 3D printing helmets. Let's see if we can make a helmet file using this service. So again, I jumped into mid journey, used some prompts from one of my favorite characters and got an image asset after a while playing around with something that I was really happy with. So I then took those set of files, which again, you can actually take multiple sets of images. So if you have a front, a side profile or a top or a back, you can upload those at one time to the service to get a better render of your 3D object. And again, after about 10 to 20 minutes, I got a notification that my file was ready. And this time it's looking significantly better. Now, I have to say, after downloading the file and taking a look at it, this isn't a 3D printable helmet, so to speak. I would still need to merge all of the objects together because if I bring it into a 3D tool like Nomad or Blender, I can see all of the individual objects. Now, what this is really great for is if I wanted to further refine this helmet. I wasn't entirely expecting this to give me like a perfect helmet right off the get go here. And it didn't quite capture all of the details, but it captured a lot of them 
and the overall shape of that particular object. And I really love the overall design of this helmet, so I'm gonna continue to play around with it offline in Blender and try and get this in a place that I can actually run off and print this and share it with my Patreon members. I still wanted to test out trying to get a dripping skull, so I went back into Mid Journey, plugged in some more inputs, and was able to, after a little while of trial and error, get a skull that I thought looked pretty cool and not too detailed. Again, I'm trying to go for the lower end option there on the service and get that uploaded. And again, after about 10 to 20 minutes, it's a fairly quick process of the turnaround for it to generate these 3D objects, it was able to spit something out that looks so much better than that original and I'm honestly pretty happy with these initial results. Now, again, it's not something that's entirely 3D printable right off the bat. These are not 3D objects that are designed for you know, non-supported 3D printing. It's not like a 3D modeler that's experienced with 3D printing is going in there and trying to get this to be perfectly oriented and set up so that's ideally made for your 3D printers. That's why we still have amazing designers out there like Clockspring 3D or Photos Mint or Wexter or these other, or these other amazingly talented designers that are out there creating these beautiful 3D files that I don't think the AI tools will ever quite get to, but I think this is still an awesome first step in that direction. Now, if I take the 3D file that's been generated from 3D Maker AI and bring it into my 3D modeling tool of choice, which is Nomad Sculpt, here we can get a better look at this particular file, and we can see that the polygon count is that it's a, it's it's rel relatively low poly, which I was expecting from the price point that we were paying for there. But what's really cool about this is that each of the components of the skull is its own individual object here. So, like each of these individual teeth, I can come in here and manipulate and modify as needed, which is really dang cool before making this a solid mesh and running off and trying to 3D print it. The other really cool thing about this is if I turn on the wireframe mode, you can see that the geometry is super clean with all this. I'm honestly kind of shocked at how clean this is able to crank out these particular 3D files from the surface. I was expecting something to be much messier than this. Now to make this one solid object in Nomad Sculpt, again, this is going to vary vary from 3D modeling software to 3D modeling software, but in Nomad, I can come in here and I can see all the different objects here. I can select all of them, and then I can do a Boolean operation and join them all so that it's one solid object. And before I go through the exporting process, I actually want to do two quick 3D print tests with this that I've never done before. So we're going to take this low poly version of the skull and then export this out and get it 3D printed. But we're also going to do a comparison by coming in here and I'm going to subdivide this by adding more geometry to this by two, which will help smooth out this skull. And then we're also going to compare that to this same 3D print. And while these are printing, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Neptune 4 3D printers that we're printing these skulls on. They're both affordable and print ridiculously fast while still maintaining some amazing crispy details for your 3D prints. And the best part is these are under $300 for these ridiculously fast 3D printers. Elegoo also recently released their Elegoo Mars 4 and 4 Ultra resin 3D printers along with the Saturn 3 and the Saturn 3 Ultra. If you're interested in more information about any of these 3D printers, you'll find links to those down below. And here is the results of our little printing experiment with our 3D AI generated files. This is still wild to me. Now, I did have to go into Nomad Sculpt and further refine these just ever so slightly. I had to modify the base of the skull so it would give it something more of a flat surface to sit on when it comes to 3D printing. And then I was able to shave off the bottom and Prusa Slicer to get this to be a, a nice flat surface and minimize some of the supports. It still needed supports on both of these files. This is the exact same file. Again, just one is lower polygon than the other. And I use the exact same settings for both of these. Now, what's interesting to see is that the lower polygon count of this skull took slightly longer than the higher resolution version. I, I don't quite understand why that happened. Same printers, same exact settings, same filaments, same files. Yeah, 
it's wild to me. I'm not entirely sure about that one, but the results I think look pretty good. I did have some failures there with the supports, which I think has come to be expected with some of these crazy files here that were generated from the AI tool. And after seeing the prints, I decided to jump back into Nomad Sculpt and further refine this sculpt by adding in a little bit more details. I spent maybe 10, 15 minutes at most using some of the basic functions that are there in Nomad and went off and printed this again at a much larger scale. And I have to say this is much closer to what I was envisioning with a melted skull. Now I still had some issues with the teeth and printing and supports. So I still need to go back in and refine that a good bit more. I think I'm just gonna try and merge the lower jaw and upper jaw together to help minimize some of the overhangs there for the teeth. And I really wanted to retest out that higher detailed $40 option in 3D Maker AI. So I generated this Cthulhu skull in mid journey and uploaded it there in about 20 to 30 minutes. I had a file that I was now able to 3D print and work with. And I'm running off in resin 3D printing these on the Elegoo Mars 4 using the original lower poly count and then another that is upscaled in resolution. Now this is pretty amazing. I am thoroughly impressed with the results that I was able to get from these resin 3D printed little skull Cthulhu's that were AI 3D modeled. The only thing I had to do is I extended the base of that file so that I could cut it off so that it would sit flat on a tabletop and would just stand up properly. The other thing is, again, I added a little bit more of the geometry there so I could have a smoothed out version versus a slightly more low poly, but with the resin versions, it's almost hard to tell which is which. Now I wanted to see what I could do with those files back in Nomad, so I brought them in and spent all of, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes adding some more details and textures, then went off and resin 3D printed this again. And the results are so freaking cool. Again, the AI service is the starting point for me to be able to come in here and make the adjustments that I needed to get to a point where I could then 3D print this and now can go ahead and share these with my Patreon members. I also created two different variations of this because there were two different objects for the Cthulhu skull, one with the base attached so it sits nice and flat, and then the other is just the skull version here with the little tendrils hanging low there. Now it might not be the perfect solution for you out there, but if you're looking for a really unique 3D model that you can't find anywhere, this might be a way, especially if you don't have 3D modeling skills to attain that and at least have a starting point that you could further refine as needed with some of those things. I'm gonna be continuing to play with this over the next handful of weeks and making more models and sharing those with my Patreon members, which by the way, I wanna say a huge thank you to all my Patreon members for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs if you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings or things like these 3D models that I'm generating through this AI service, you'll find those over in my Patreon. And this certainly isn't gonna be replacing all of the amazing designers and modelers that are out there that are just making ridiculously cool things that are very unique and very detailed and in some cases very specific to 3D printing. This is just a way to, I think, get your foot in the door with some specific 3D models or potentially push you into learning how to 3D model when it comes to refining some of the things that you're generating with this service. And what we're seeing here is just the beginning. Think about Mid Journey when it first started a year plus ago when I first started playing with it, it wasn't generating the best quality looking things, but now it's gotten significantly better over a year's time. And I'm anticipating stuff like this will also continue to improve. And if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, I did get a code that I can share with you all that'll save you 20% on any order that you make through 3D Maker AI, which is also the same code that I'm gonna be using now for all of the 3D models that I need to generate. But let me know what you think about this new AI 3D modeling service. And if there's something that you'd be interested in seeing me try to generate through that program, maybe I'll see your comment and try and run off and generate that. But hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time.